Hello, and welcome to this Floracast episode. My name is Kelly Ivers, and today I'm going to give you an update on some of the research we've been conducting at NC State University regarding boxwood blight and the use of fungicides. As many of you know, boxwood blight was first detected in North America in the fall of 2011. Since then, this emerging nursery and landscape disease has been reported in 12 U.S. states and three Canadian provinces. However, most likely there are many other locations where this disease exists but have not yet been documented. Because it's important to know what boxwood blight looks like, I'd like to quickly review the symptoms of this disease before we start talking about fungicides. Initial symptoms include black to brown leaf spots, often with darker margins. These spots can be seen on both the top side and underside of the leaves. Once leaf spotting occurs, brown to black elongated cankers develop on infected stems. These are often seen right before defoliation of the plant. These leaf spots eventually lead to blighted or tan colored leaves, followed by leaf drop and twig dieback. Excessive defoliation is commonly associated with boxwood blight. We started conducting cultivar and fungicide trials in the summer of 2012, so I'll start there. Our first fungicide trial involved one gallon English boxwood. All treatments were applied before exposure to the fungus, roughly one to two days. Products were applied on a 14 day interval using a CO2 backpack sprayer at 50 to 60 PSI. This is a picture taken from the replicated trial showing how well the treatment in the middle actually worked. The center plot was treated with the fungicide spectro. These are the results from that trial. We looked at a range of active ingredients from several different mode of action groups. Again, these products were applied preventively, which means before disease onset. The column on the right indicates the amount of cumulative leaf area disease due to boxwood blight over time. Although we experienced lower disease pressure in this trial than in the others, we were able to identify two different tiers of products based on efficacy. The products in the red box were the most effective fungicides at preventing boxwood blight. Although the products in the blue box did not entirely prevent the fungus from getting established, they were fairly effective at keeping the disease in check. As you can see, the most effective products in the red box contained either the active ingredient chlorothalonil or the active ingredient fludioxanil. Chlorothalonil can be found by itself in the fungicide name Dacanil Weatherstick or as a premix product in the fungicides Spectro, Disarm C, and Concert 2. Fludioxanil can be found in Medallion or in the premix product Palladium. Let's move forward and talk about the second fungicide trial that we conducted during the spring of this year, in 2013. This is a picture of that trial in the back as we performed our inoculations of one gallon English boxwood plants. Again, we applied these products preventively at least one to two days before the plants were exposed to the fungus, and we had six plants per treatment replication. And this is the data from that trial. We looked at a number of the same chemistries as we did in 2012, keeping intact the most effective products and adding in a few new ones. Some of the new products we investigated included Strike Plus, which is not yet commercially available for the ornamental market, Protect, which is a Mancozeb product, Profite, which is a phosphoric acid product, and Xerotol. We had much higher disease pressure in this trial due to the weather conditions we had this past spring. Hence, we were able to achieve over 75% leaf area diseased in non-sprayed plots. The most effective treatments can be seen in the red box at the top. These would include seven of the most effective chemistries from our 2012 trial, as well as the Strike Plus treatment. Unfortunately, the Mencozeb product Protect did not do as well as expected. I was assuming since chlorothalonil did so well and is also a protectant that Mencozeb might do equally as well, but that was not the case. 
These products either contain the active ingredient chlorothalonil, fludioxanil, or a DMI mode of action as found in Torque, Turney, or Strike Plus. All of these products in the red box were effective at preventing boxwood blight in our spring 2013 trial. All right, time to move on to our final fungicide trial that we just finished conducting. I find this one to be the most interesting of all. We wanted to take the most effective chemistries identified in our prior two trials and compare them as preventive versus curative applications. We had very high disease pressure at this time and we were able to achieve up to 78% leaf area diseased. So what we did is we took these eight chemistries and in the box at the bottom, we evaluated them as preventive treatments, which means we applied them one day before we exposed the plants to the fungus. For our curative applications, we took those same chemistries and we made those applications six days after inoculation. This would be uh, analogous to a grower making an application after actually seeing disease symptoms. So we wanted to see what would happen if we applied these products as a curative application rather than preventive. Although the curative applications were not effective at all at managing boxwood blight, where we found between 36 to 67 percent leaf area diseased, this data still tells a really nice story. It's pretty cut and dry and what it shows is that these products do not work as curative applications. 36 percent leaf area diseased is not an acceptable threshold for boxwood blight. For in instance, take as example Dacanil weather stick. When applied preventively one day before exposure to the fungus, we found less than 1% leaf area diseased. However, in comparison, we saw over 40% leaf area diseased when the same product and the same rate was applied six days post inoculation. This goes to show that these chemistries work much better as preventive applications than after disease onset. Unfortunately, we have yet to find any chemistries that are very effective once the disease gets established. These pictures are a nice visual from the data I just presented. This is Dacanil as a preventive application on one gallon English boxwood. This is Dacanil as a curative application on one gallon English boxwood. And this is what the box would look like if you make no fungicide applications at all. We decided to take all three data sets and combine our data into producing a summary fungicide table. This table can be found at the URL listed at the bottom of the slide, go.ncsu.edu backslash boxwood underscore blight underscore links. This table gives a list of the most effective products, their active ingredient, whether they have commercial labels, their mode of action, what kinds of locations they can be applied in, such as a greenhouse, nursery, or landscape, as well as their application interval. Unfortunately, most of these products work on a 7 to 14 day basis, and in our trials we looked at everything at a 14 day application interval. Now that I've provided hot off the presses fungicide data for managing boxwood blight, I'd like to finish by con concluding with this final slide. You should really know what boxwood blight looks like. You should never introduce suspicious looking or unhealthy plants into a production area or landscape. You should not commingle new stock with existing plants. You should always practice good sanitation measures with tools and with people when working with boxwood. You should never try to maintain infected plants. And you should apply fungicides preventively in commercial nurseries only at high risk locations. These would be locations in which counties that are known to have boxwood blight or if you bring a lot of new plant material in. Thank you for your time, and I hope this was informative to you. Goodbye.